In this lesson, I'm going to show you what I call dexterity exercise number one. This is an exercise that a lot of guitar players will start off with because it's very basic, but it uses all the fingers and allows us to really concentrate on the technique that we learned in the basic fretting video just a few, a few videos ago. And this is an, ex an exercise that I've used for years and I still use it, especially if I'm watching TV or something like that and I'm wanting to, to concentrate on the show, but actually play guitar, do something that's uh, still being constructive. I'm still actually playing guitar, but I don't have to concentrate a lot. So for you in the beginning, you know, especially if you're new to these techniques, you definitely will want to focus on the techniques that we're doing. Later on, it's going to become more rote and it's just going to become part of you, muscle memory and what have you, and you'll just be able to play it. But in the beginning, remember, we want to concentrate on a few of those different things, right? We want to play on our fingertips. Remember the dots on our fingers? We want to have those. So get out your Sharpie or, or any sort of pen, put that dot on the, on the tips of your fingers. And because when you're looking down, if that dot is looking up at you and you're you're playing a note, you know you're doing it wrong because that dot should be invisible. It should be on the string itself. See, if I have it like that, I'm not seeing the dot. If it's like that, then yes, I am seeing the dot. So I know that this is correct. That wouldn't be correct because I'm seeing the dot. Okay, so remember that. We want to be playing on our fingertips, right? We want to be close to the fret. We want to use all of our fingers. So in this case here, this exercise goes one, two, three, four. So we want to make sure that each finger plays its associated fret. So one, two, three, four fingers will play frets one, two, three, four. Okay. We also want to make sure that our thumb is dropped down behind the back of the neck so that we have that room, right? Right in there. If we're like this, if we're grappling the neck, if, you're, if you've been playing for many years and you're doing that, then that's okay. But in the beginning, you really can't do that. You have to learn it the right way first, and then later on, you can start cheating, which is not really a cheat. It's just a little bit more comfortable to hold your hand like that. Most pro guitar players, you'll see with the thumb over the top of the neck for a lot of what, what it is that they're playing, uh, except for classical guitar players, because uh, it's a much wider neck, and it's very looked down upon. But... Technique-wise, it's not at all wrong, not at all. You'll see the best guitar players with their thumb over the top of the neck. But for you in the beginning, do not do it. I highly suggest not doing that. Drop the thumb so we got that room back there. Now, with all that being said, oh, let's, we also got to curl that last knuckle. So a few things to think about, right? But I promise you that if you think about them now, and don't worry about playing a song yet, just worry about the technique, the technique will develop and then it will be a blast when you're playing because you're not thinking about why isn't that chord sounding bad or why is that chord sounding bad? Why is that note sounding bad? It's not going to be sounding bad because you'll have the technique down. Okay? So this exercise is very simple and it goes one, two, three, four. Okay? And so please use the associated PDF that is related to this video. So when we're doing this, okay, I want you to really take your time. Enjoy the ride. You'll hear me say that a lot. Enjoy the ride. Take your time in this, okay? Every part of this is part of your journey. So if you're playing through it nice and slowly, you're learning, okay? Now, you don't have to play it slower than you can, but don't try to rush it. You going faster is not helping you, okay? I promise you, getting it accurate is what's going to help you. In fact, accuracy always leads to speed. You'll never have speed before accuracy. So you gotta get it right first. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you can either rest your hand or have it in the air here. I would suggest resting it because you're gonna have more leverage and more strength and less volatility. So you're not going to be missing the string if you're you're planted here okay now you're just gonna worry about one fret one note at a time so close to the fret we got that one second finger now notice my first finger came up now you could keep it there that's fine but 
allow your hand to naturally do what it should do there, you know what I mean? So if your finger's coming way out here, if it naturally does that, just leave it. But it would be better if it was more of a relaxed movement and the finger just lifted off the fretboard because later on if you're gonna find out that that may be a wasted movement, okay? A lot further down the line, okay? So here we go, here's the one, two, three, four. Now my thumb, the back of the neck, is really not going anywhere. Now it could do this. Some people do that, they'll move their thumb in the back of the neck as the notes are going up. And that's okay if you do that, if you need that, then do that. If not, just leave the thumb where it's at. Now, you'll also find that in the beginning, your pinky may not be able to play that note. And if so, you could bring your third finger over and give it a little boost, pressing down like that. That's totally okay. But later on, you won't need that. The better your technique is, the less strength you need. So there's this constant balance of strength and technique. The really great guitar players have strong hands, but they don't really use their strength that much. It's more for endurance and more because they've just been playing so much and practiced so much that they, that they have more muscle built up and more endurance. But with that being said, the better your technique is, the less strength you'll need, the less hard, you, know, you won't have to press down as hard. Okay, so once you get through one string, and I'm doing all down strokes for this, then you've got the next string. And you want to make sure that you're practicing all the strings because you're going to feel them all different. Each one has a different sense to it. Different tone, of course. And just the sheer repetition of this is going to get you where you want to get to. Now, for those that are a little bit more advanced, if you're doing other pick picking techniques, you could do alternate down, up, down, up. And for those of you that have been doing this a while, you could get faster at it if you wanted to. But I say that with the caveat of we're not really going for speed here. We're going to develop the technique. So if you're playing through that faster, you're probably beyond this video. But most folks are not. You know, they've got to learn that 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 technique first. Okay. Now with the attached PDF, you'll see that there are a myriad of different variations that we could do on this, okay? Um, basically, we could, instead of going one, two, three, four, we could go one, two, four, three. Or we could go one, three, two, four. Or we could go one, three, four, two. Or one, four, two, three, or one, four, three, two. You know, so we have all of these different variations that we can do with this. Then we could start two, one, three, four, two, three, one, four, and so on. So starting on different fingers and having different combinations, I believe there's 24 different combinations, but nonetheless, plenty of exercises for you to do in case the one, two, three, four gets boring for you. Uh, there's many different variations to do with this, okay? So what I want you to do is Take your time with this. The more time you spend with it, the better, okay? But with that being said, you don't need to be doing this for weeks or anything like that. A few hours to get it out of the, you know, to get it into your system would be great. If you don't have a few hours to do it, you could do less than that. But remember, you know, through these lessons, we're building. And so if you have, if you're not good at one thing and we're gonna put something else on top of that, then this is kind of a weak foundation. So you wanna make sure that you're really building that core really building that foundation so that each stack that we put on it, it's, it's a strong foundation. These beginning lessons are really the most important lessons that you're ever gonna have, okay? Take your time with it, slow and steady wins the race, and I'll see you in the next video.